What's up boys and girls? This is Spit Logic, and today I want to talk about something that I've coined as the Roland Conspiracy. What is it that Roland is up to and how are they going to stay relevant and competitive with all these other pieces of gear that's used for beat making, specifically how it aligns with the SP404 Mark II. So let's go ahead and get into it. I think first of all, before uh, we talk about the theory, I guess there's a disclaimer that I have to do. I, I don't have insider information. I'm not an insider. I don't work for Roland. This is purely based on my observations since I've had the SP404 Mark II and just looking at the device through its progression of the different updates and the different features that it has between the SP404 Mark II as well as the app. So based on that, you know, I just want to kind of talk about what I've seen and what I've observed and then kind of tie in what I've seen Roland do so far into I guess two categories, what I think they're going to be doing and coming up with and what I really hope that they do. Between all of its predecessors, the SP404 Mark II was a huge leap, a huge advancement in it. Not only did they increase the size and the capacity on the SP404 Mark II, but they had this, this firmware created where it was able to update and what it would do is it would update the different workflow, it would update the different ways that you would interact with the SP404, um, not just by at a human interaction level, but also the way it interacts with your computer, specifically with the complementary SP404 Mark II application. Now with all that being said, it wasn't specific for a particular time. It left it wide open and it left it to where the SP404 Mark II had the ability to upgrade, it had the ability to um, add new features, new ways of doing it, and it also had the ability to enhance and upgrade the app complementary to the firmware being updated. So where am I going with this? What, what does that mean as far as the Mark II is concerned? When I look at what's been going on, and, and this is also kind of a problem that we're seeing going forward is that there's so many features, there's so many different ways, different workflows and different things that you can do with the Mark II. Unless you are intimately involved with it on a daily basis, you're not gonna be able to utilize all those features of the SP404 Mark II. I think also in a lot of ways that with all the different buttons, there's only a limited amount on the actual Mark II that pushing all these different buttons and doing them in these different patterns, it makes it kind of difficult for you to make that workflow flow, make it seem a little bit more organic and more natural, which is one of the things that makes the 4.4 Mark II, really all the 4.4 series, just so attractive to people. There's a, there's a natural ebb and flow that is involved with the button pushing, and it's with all the additions that you add to it, you kind of get away from that and get used to just trying to remember the patterns of buttons that you have to push in order to get a certain way. But the thing is, is that all these different new features that they add are features that you would see like on the MPC-1 or any kind of DAW. They are workflow features that make it more akin to it, which is why even though we're calling it firmware, Really, I look at the SP404 Mark II as a computer that has a software within it. And that's where all these different mechanisms and things are coming from. And then you gotta look at like when they are enhancing or upgrading the firmware, they're also upgrading the application as well. And they have gotten to the point where the application has this kind of seamless plug-in feature where it operates right in tune with any sort of DAW. So what I've noticed about what Roland has done specifically with the SP404 community is that they are very sensitive to what the people who love that gear, what they want. And they're very open. Everything that I've heard about their interaction with Roland has been very positive. And when the community wants something, Roland does its best in order to deliver. So there's kind of a, a balance that has to be done between ensuring that your core audience is still involved, but then also making sure that you create something that can bring in new people, bringing new perspectives and new creativity in using that device. But we don't live in the world where we just operate off of gear. We don't live in a world where we just operate off of DAWs. And I think that what the MPC community has done, what the uh, native instruments 
uh, machine community has done is that they have created this, this very fine bridge between actual gear and using a DAW. Um, I always call, you know, the MPC-1 and the massive machine, I call them DAWs in a box because essentially they are gear in a box and then you just have this screen that looks exactly like a DAW. SP-4 Mark II has not gone that route. It has maintained kind of the integrity of its original design. And then even though it has a screen, it's still kind of a pixelated screen, which makes it simple and provides this more simple representation. It's not a touch screen. So you still have to do buttons. You still have to use knobs. You still have to use kinetics in order to manipulate the audio and to do the workflow. But again, when you introduce things like the application that uh, is a complement to it, then you can do some things on there that you can still do with button mashing, but it makes it a little bit more doll-like. So what is Roland trying to do? This is my theory, and this is what I think they're gonna be doing. I believe that what Roland wants to do is that they want to maintain the SP404 community, but they also want to compete with people like Korg, with Akai, you know, with native instruments. And they want to create what they are going to deem as their answer to the MPC series of devices. I theorize that what Roland will do is they're going to bring back the SP555. If I were a king for the day, if I were the president of the, of the Mar SP44 department, I would bring back and label it the SP555 Mark II and utilize all of those different workflows that they've been working with that you get through button mashing and just have it on a singular piece of gear similar to how the MPC one is. That allows you to do a couple of things. You can create different variations of it. And then what is, what is even sweeter is that that SP555 is essentially the same level of firmware software that you would have if you had the actual SP44 Mark II application on it. So it, it works kind of like the application, but it also works in conjunction with the SP44 Mark II. So a big problem that people who have the MPC-1 who also have the SP-44 Mark II, the two are not necessarily compatible. They're two different companies, two different organizations. A lot of people just use the Mark II for its effects. Uh, they do use it for other things, but the actual seamless operation between the two, it just isn't there because it's two different companies. I think that what Roland can accomplish by releasing the SP555 Mark II is creating that seamless integration that we've all been looking for to plug in my SP44 Mark II into a, another piece of gear, a DAW in the box, and just use both of them in concert without any sort of additional bridge between the two. Now that's my first theory. I think that uh, Roland could certainly open a lot of eyes and open up a lot of um, competition between them and the other organizations, I certainly would be interested in something that has a seamless integration with the Mark II. But what I would really love, what in my dreams would make me whole, is if Roland created an SP44 Mark II interface that allows you to plug your Mark II within it, and it just has the additional knobs and the additional software within it. I would liken it to some sort of docking station where you have this, this, this device that has the additional buttons and the additional knobs that coincide with the workflow. It has some sort of screen integrated with it, whether it's on a side or maybe on top. And then you place your SP44 Mark II somewhere in the middle there, and then it plugs in through you know, through the, uh, the, the digital interface on it, the USB-C interface, and as well as the, the audio ports as well. And then just by placing it in there, it becomes essentially a 555 Mark II in the same way that it would be for, for an MPC. I think maybe, uh, maybe I should make a drawing of it or, or something to represent that. But in my head, I'm, I'm just, 
I just feel like there's there are these two panels on each side and there's a gap between them. And that gap is filled by your SP-404 Mark II. It becomes an entire unit by itself. And the huge benefit to that is that you're still using your Mark II. You still have the processing power. You still have the same workflow, but you just, you just have the different buttons. You have a screen uh, that is also there. And it's the complementary application that you're actually using to manipulate your Mark II. So I think this does a couple of things. Uh, I think if you go the 555 Mark II route, I think what it does is that it creates a legitimate competitor that will certainly have new people who want to get the equipment. And then people like me who have a loyalty to the SP44 series that will want to get that gear and also kind of tamper and play around with it. I think my dream world where I exist uh, is primarily focused on the core audience. I think you are going to get some new people that just want to be a part of something that is new, but certainly your core audience is really going to be catered to something like that. I think the biggest problem or the biggest concern would be management of your projects and management of your workflow. I think if you have the 555 Mark II, even though it integrates, integrates with the, the, Mark, the 4.4 Mark II, I think what you'll have is the same thing that you run into when you use an MPC-1 with the 4.4. You have a project saved on one of them and not the other, which means either they have to always be together in order for you to, to manipulate that project or the, the Mark II becomes a supplement and not necessarily a partner uh, with, with your workflow and with the way that you make music. I think my dream, my fantasy interface device, I think that allows you to maintain the integrity of all your projects and carry those projects with you anywhere you go. Look at it similar to like a docking station for a laptop. If you have a laptop and then you put a docking station in it, you can add peripherals like keyboards and monitors and things like that. But no matter what you do, no matter where you go, you still have a single computer that you use, whether on a desktop or whether you're traveling with it. And to me, that would be perfect. That would be exactly what I would want, something I would want to see and something I would be willing to play with. But I don't know. Tell me what you think. Uh, what do you think about this theory? What do you think about this idea? Do you think that it is feasible for Roland to pursue competing with the MPC community, competing with the machine com community, core, all of those different organizations? Do you think it's in their best interest to compete and to kind of go in that direction? Or do you think that the Mark II is fine the way it is? Or if you have things that you think that could improve it, things that need to change with the SP404 Mark II, what are those things? What are your theories? What do you think Roland is up to? I'll say this as kind of a, a last, uh, the last part of this, this video. I know that right now with Akai and with other organizations, they are trying to develop those small portable beat making pieces of gear. And that is going to be in direct competition with what Roland and the SP-404 Mark II have accomplished. I think it's only fair that Roland creates something that will combat those MPC users and um, Native Instruments massive machine users that, that can be utilized outside of just a portable device, but something that is in studio that can compete with the legacy that devices like the MPC have, have uh, created. Well, that's all I got for this video. I thank you for the view. I thank you for the listen. And until next time, peace.